So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Grizzard. This is Discrete Math Fall 2020, University of South Florida. That's everything. Um, and today we are going to be talking about clockwork arithmetic. So, um, we're going to first start with the quiz, of course, reviewing the quiz, but that's the thing we're going to do today. If you're still following, if you're following along in the book, we are still in section 4.1. We will be in 4.2 very shortly. Um, and it's also, this material is also in one of the other books I posted. Okay, so as usual, there's chat, there's chat in Discord, there is chat on Twitch. Um, and if it's cutting out for you, try refreshing. Um, because I've noticed sometimes it does that if, you know, you sign on and that it doesn't work and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yes, yeah, so clockwork arithmetic. So, yeah, so... Is that the thing I said that everybody freaks out about? Yes. So the quote for today is, um, you know, right here, buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because uh, Canvas is going bye-bye. Um, so that's what's going to happen today. Um, and it's kind of fun. Uh, but let's start with the quiz. Um, so, yeah, we'll start with the quiz here. Let's get rid of this book. All right, so the quiz, I'm still getting some people getting this wrong. So I'm, as I said, I'm going to keep asking this question uh, or something similar um, until uh, that works. Uh, there's a question about the test. I thought I enabled the test answers, but I'll look at it again. Um, I'll make a little note, check, to answer, check to test answers. Okay. So a plus b to the fourth equals which of the following? Well, here's the expansion, right? So a plus b to the fourth equals four to zero, a to the fourth, b to the zero, plus dot, 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 plus uh, four choose four, a to the uh, zero, b to the fourth, and that's that answer there. This answer right here is nonsense. This answer right here is missing the factorials on the bottom, but this one isn't. That one is correct, because that is 4 choose 0 equals 4 falls 0 over 0 factorial. Remember, this is 1, and that's 1, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then 4 choose 2 equals 4 false 2 over 2 factorial, which equals 4 times 3 over 2 times 1, which equals 6. So this is the correct one of those. Uh, any questions about that? 1 to 5, how do we feel about that one? Okay, well, there is no five pole, apparently. Um, so we'll have to go to the backup one for that. Okay. So now I want to compute the following. I have 4 into 6. Any questions, by the way, about that one? Okay. 4 into 6, I get 1, 4, 2, remainder 2. So this is 2. Now, 5 factorial, choose 5. We'll notice here that 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So I didn't need to do the whole thing. This, so 5 factorial is divisible by 5. So the remainder is going to wind up being 0. How do we feel about that 1 to 5? Because 5 is in the formula for 5 factorial, and I've got no division to get rid of it, right? I'm going to wind up with it being 0. I don't even need to compute it. The formula is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The thing's divisible by 5. <laughs> okay? There's, there's nothing else to say about that. 
The same thing here, five false two equals five times four, which is divisible by five, that one's zero. This one's a little different. Six choose two is six times five over two times one. And this equals 15. So this is not divisible by six. Okay. So when I do this, I do six into 15. I do a two there, I get a 12. I'm gonna wind up with a three. Okay. Now, 5 mod 3 is 2. 2 mod 3, it's 0, remainder 2. How do we feel about these two, 1 to 5? That whole 2 mod 3 thing, right? I've got zero. If I do if I do um, three and the two, I get zero, zero, two. I get remainder two back. So this is part F. And if you look at the code for this division algorithm, in other words, your problem set for this week. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. I had it up before. Uh, let's get the grade scope. Um, All right, so if I pull it up on um, screen here, if I pull this up, notice what the, the division algorithm is going to do here. It's going to, right now, my uh, for 2 mod 3, that means A was 2 and uh, D was 3. So... It's not the case since R is A, R is not less than zero. So I'm going to come down here. And then this is going to, you know, while D is less than R. Well, D is not less than R, right? So it's just going to skip and it's just going to return what it initially had as its R. Okay. And then let's look at the next one. Well, the next one is going to run the same way. That negative one. Well, it's not going to run exactly the same way. Now R is less than zero. So it's going to add three. So it adds three. And what does it come out with? Well, it comes out with two. And that's sort of the point right here. The fact that this is two is sort of the point of the whole thing. The... I keep, every time I add three, I come back to the same number. So how do we feel about that one to five? Every, if I start out at two and I subtract three, I'm still going to run out the same module. Just like if I add three, I'm going to wind up back at two. And if you look at the algorithm, you can actually see that, okay? So the way the algorithm works, right? If I have a remainder of seven, so let's look at this. If A, if A uh, mod uh, um, 10 equals seven, and then I add 10 more to it. What happens if I add 10? 
Well, remember that this is distributive. So a mod t this is the same as a mod 10 plus 10 mod 10. So this is the same thing as 7 plus 0. And likewise, I do the exact same thing. If I keep adding 10, I'm going to wind up with the same thing. The remainder stays the same. I've just added the modulo in, right? Again and again and again. So my quotient changes, but my remainder remains the same. So how do we feel about that idea of one to five? Well, the number doesn't has to be positive. I want this kind of behavior to be consistent. Okay, this is distribution. And I mentioned that this was true before. Um, when we started out at the beginning, if I add, it, does, I can, I could just, I could take the pieces, right? A, um, a plus B mod uh, D equals A mod D plus B mod D mod D. So if I want that to be consistent on the negatives, right, if I have negative 1 mod 3, all right, that should equal 3 mod 3 plus negative 1 mod 3, since I've only added 0. Well, remember what's supposed to happen. Okay, now, the modulo in PHP acts a little differently. Okay? So, modulo in PHP will give you negative numbers sometimes. But, negative 1 here is congruent to, is, is the same as 2 mod 3. They're the exact same numbers. So, sometimes, some problems, so note... Some languages, as a matter of fact, most programming languages, will give negative modulus. Okay? Um, if you put the negative in, you get the negative one. But notice here, if I add three, right, what does the algorithm do? It keeps adding numbers. So if I go negative one, so if I have six, let's do um, seven mod three, and then I subtract three, I'll get something that's also equals one, right? Now I subtract three, and I still get something that's one. So I subtract three again, and I equal something that's one. So I subtract three again, and I equal something that's one. Because remember, we're talking about the remainder. Okay? Well, because I'm modding by 3, so how does the algorithm work? The algorithm works by doing repeated subtraction. Right? Or addition if you're negative. Right? So the algorithm is just going to keep going. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do 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 by the same number. Okay? So if I add to the quotient, you know, if I add to the quotient the the, the divisor, I'm still gonna wind up with the exact same number.
Yeah, so negative 3 mod 7 would equal 4, right? Add 7 and you wind up with 4. Okay, how do we feel about that now, 1 to 5? And there is, by the way, a command for um, for PHP to ha to make it do that behavior. It's called GMP mod, um, and it always gives you a non-negative result, um, which is really what you're um, what you're doing here. Um, so I, I I understand it's a little bit tricky. Are there any more questions about that? Um, so to answer the question that's in chat, negative three mod three, right? So it's, if you did the division in the algorithm, you wind up with negative one remainder two. Right. So when you do it, you simply add back. Now, this is something that's a little different. I know some, most computer programming languages, when you do the mod symbol, you get something that's a little different, and that's because the 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 mod symbol in most programming languages, or at least in PHP and Java and C like languages, it gives you the um, the um, the negative version, right? So when you when you ask it for negative one, it, you know, it, if you if I had asked it for negative four mod three, it would have given me negative one. So it would have picked the answer that's on the same side of zero as the one that I wanted. But in math, modulars are always positive, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've got a tricky one here. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about what that means. All right, these negative modulos and all those things. Let's talk about that. And this is called clockwork arithmetic, and that's what we're doing today. Um, today, what I'm going to do Um, is we're going to look at what happens when we talk about these modulus. And we're going to deviate a little bit from the way the book sets it up. Because the book wants to set up these congruence classes, which is what they are. But they're, the way that they do it is a little technical. And what we want to do is kind of eh, go over that thing. So what we're going to do... What we're going to do is look at what this means, okay? So if I look at, let's say, five integers. And by the way, these things are called a ring. I'll write that word down just in case you want to look it up. But we have this interesting property. Instead of taking the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and going all that way, let's make a circle of them. So let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, zero. This is called Z6 and it is the integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five with operations. Okay, so this is I'm going to call them Z plus and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to I'm going to call them plus dot for the moment and then I'm going to stop. So plus dot A plus dot B equals A plus B mod six. A times dot B. That's not a colon. It's a dot equals a times b mod 6. All right. So in z6, one plus dot three equals four. One plus dot five equals zero. One plus dot eight equals nine, which equals, well, let's see. I start here and I go eight over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three. Negative one equals five. It's not just base six, because in base six, what I would be doing is adding another number here. Okay, this is this is a little different. Okay. It's not just base six, although that's a good analogy for the moment. It's moving around in a circle. So addition moves around this way. The successor of five is zero. The successor of two is three. Okay. In other words, the thing goes around in a circle. One to five. How do we feel about that? Well, it's not impossible to get over five. It's just that six equals one. And 12 equals zero. Well, why is negative one five? If I go backwards, if I go to the predecessor of zero, I get five. Now your book is gonna write it like this, and I can write dots, okay? So I can do the dot thing above this thing, um, and that's not uncommon, but I hate that. Okay. No, six equals, I'm sorry, six equals zero, not one. That was a mistake. Seven equals one. Okay. All right, now I'm going to drop the, I am going to drop Okay, but what's interesting about this, there are a couple things, well, you can, you can get values over five, they're just equal to whatever it is. Because if I run around this track, 
twice, right? I've gone six, 12 around, but it's equal, 12 equals zero. So it's not that you can't get over five, it's just that you're back to where you started, right? So you're thinking about a wall and it's not a wall, it's a circle. Okay. Again, if, when you say five is the peak, it, it, it means more like you can't go past it in a sense, or you start going down, but it's not that you go down. It's like you go around, right? So wherever I am, I just keep going around and around and around and around. It's not that eight doesn't exist in the system. It's just that eight equals two. And negative five equals, well, one, two, three, four, five, one. And if you think about this, this makes sense. Because what is negative five? What is negative five? Negative five is the number that when added to five equals zero, okay? And since five plus one equals six equals zero, negative one Sorry, negative five equals one. Because remember, that's what negatives are. Okay. And you've actually seen this before. You've seen behavior like this before. Where have you seen this before? That's right, the unit circle. Right? Zero equals two pi on the unit circle. Except the unit circle, they usually do it in the other direction. And we call this type of structure, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention this briefly. We call this type of structure a ring. Okay. So let n be a posant. Okay. Then Zn is a ring. Now, what does that mean? Addition is commutative, distributive, associative, sorry, and distributive. Multiplication is commutative, associative. Well, I should say these two are associative, and then uh, addition and multiplication are distributive.
Okay, there is an element. Zero so that for all X in Z in zero plus X equals X. And there is, so we have an additive identity. And there is an element one so that for all X and Z in one times X equals X. And um, every element has a, an additive inverse. Okay, um, I'm not going to ask you to remember this here. I'm not going to ask you this term ring. It's not in your book, um, or at least it's not in the same section in your book. Um, but I know people like to look things up online. Um, so uh, the properties are important, but the important thing is what's missing. Uh, yeah, I can't make that. I'll stop that here. The important thing here is not what's in here, although that is important. So a plus B equals B plus A and A plus B plus C equals um, A plus B plus C, uh, AB equals BA, um, ABC equals ABC, um, a times B plus C equals A B plus A C. Um, what's important here is it's not additive inverses mean things like, so every element is an additive inverse. So for all uh, X and Z in, there exists Y and Z in, so that x plus y equals zero. Okay. So there are the explanations here for those properties. Yeah, so one and negative one are inverses, two and negative two are inverses, okay? Um, but the other additive, so like, but notice here that in Z6, negative 2 equals 4, since 4 plus 2 equals 0. So some of the things... So some of the properties that we have that we liked about addition and multiplication hold, right? Because all of these things were true for the integers as well, right? If I had that infinite set of integers, these are all true. Okay, I, I could go forward, I could go backwards. I had nice little distrib distributivity. But notice what's missing. So multiplication, so addition and subtraction are all nice and happy. But multiplication and division get a little strange. So let's look at multiplication.
again in Z6. Z6. In integers modulo 6. 1 times 3 equals 3. We're happy with that one. 2 times 2 equals 4. That makes sense. 2 times 4 equals 8 equals 2. How do we feel about these three things, 1 to 5? Okay, here's the part that's kind of weird. 3 times 2 equals 6 equals 0. In other words, I want to go red on that. Not going to let me. 3 times 2 equals 6 equals 0. In other words, A and B do not. A and B can both be non-zero but A times B equals zero. Alright, and that's strange because that's not true in the integers. Right? If I have a number Right? In regular, in regular multiplication, if A times B does not equal, if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero or B equals zero. There's no other way to do that in regular multiplication. Okay, but here I'm in trouble, right? Here I've got three times two equals six. So if A times B equals zero, then A and B are called zero divisors. And now we have a problem. And the problem is inverses. All right, so let's look at one half. Let's change to, um, let's look at, still, in Z6. Let's stay in Z6. Someone asked me about, uh, sorry, Z6. Um, someone's asking me about Z7, and I'll get to that in a moment. But let's look at Z6. What is one half? One half is the number X so that x times 2 equals 1. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? One half is the number x so that x times 2 equals 1. That was the definition of one half. It's the multiplicative inverse for 2. 
Okay. Well, what is the number x so that x times 2 equals 1? Well, 2 times 2 equals 4. That ain't it. 2 times 3 equals 0. That ain't it. 2 times 4 equals 8 equals 2. 2 times 5 equals 10 equals 4. 2 times 6 equals 12 equals 0. And 2 times 1 equals 2. So does 1 half exist? I want the number x so that x times 2 equals 1. Is there such a number? There's not. I just ran through them all to check, right? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 0. 2 times 4 is 2. 2 times 5 is 4. 2 times 6 is 12. There is no 1 half. Oh, I'm not done with the psychotic part yet. But 2 fourths exists. So 4 times 1 equals 4, not it. 4 times 2 equals 8 equals 2. So, and there it is. There is a number, I'll, I'll write this the other way so that you can see it. 1 times 4 equals 4, 2 times 4 equals 8, equals 2. So, 2 fourths exists, and 2 fourths equals 2. One to five, how do we feel about that? One half does not equal 2 fourths. What? Because one half doesn't even exist. No, it doesn't. There is no one half in Z6, in Z6. There is a two fourths, but there's no one half. Let's switch to Z7. Okay, we're going to add one more number to our thing, and we are going to come out with something completely different. So now I'm going to do Z7. Z7. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then back to, to 0 again. Okay, so I've got negative 1 equals 6, negative 2 equals 5, I've got um, et cetera, et cetera. No, we can't, 
So someone just asked, can we call 2, 4 equal to 1 half? No, because 1 half means something. 1 half means the number x so that when I multiply by 2, I get 1. So it means something different. And remember that 1 half equals, that 2 fourths equals 2. And 1 times 2, or 2 times 2 is 4. So it doesn't work. It's not 1. Let's look at Z7 though. Z7 is a little different. I've added one number to this. Right, so now we're dealing with integers modulo 7. Two times five equals 10 equals three. Now, what is one half? Well, what is one half now? No, it's integers modulo 7. So just like there was no 6 here, right? 6 is 0. So there is a, a 7. It's just 0. This equals, se this equals 7. 0 equals 7. So what is 1 half? Well, 1 half is x so that x times 2 equals 1. Well, let's see. 1 times 2 equals 2, not equal to 1. 2 times 2 equals 4, not equal to 1. 3 times 2 equals 6, not equal to 1. 7 times 2, I'm sorry, not 3 times, 4 times 2. 4 times 2 equals 8, and that is equal to 1. So, 1 half equals 4. Now, let's look at this again. What is 2 fourths? Okay, so two-fourths is x so that x times 4 equals 2. 1 times 2 equals 2 again. That's, I'm sorry, 1 times 2, 1 times 4 equals 4. That's not it. 1 times 5 equals... Not, oops, I'm doing it wrong. 2 times 4 equals 8 equals 7, right? 1. 3 times 4 equals 12 equals 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5. Four times four equals 16, which is the same thing as subtract seven from that, and I get nine. Subtract seven again, and I get what? Two. Ding, ding, ding. So, two-fourths equals four, and one-half equals two over four. Look what happened. I added one number and I was happy. Right? Here, one half did not exist, but two fourths did. And they weren't equal to each other because one half didn't equal didn't exist. Here they existed, right? So remember that one half is the x so that x equals x times two equals one. But let me recolor this so you can see it. Yeah. 
Eh, just write with the pen. Does that make it a little clearer if I just change the pen? So four times two equals eight equals one because now we're in Z7. So here, the rule is that A equals B if a mod uh, 7 equals B mod 7. How do we feel about this 1 to 5? And again, this is psychotic. This is hard. It's simple, but it's really hard. Well, one half equals two fourths. So someone's asking, how is one half equal to two fourths? And the answer is that one half equals two fourths because x times two equals one, and x times, I'm sorry, uh, the x in question is four, one half equals four, and two fourths equals four because four times four is two. The ring of integers modulo n. But Z7 was nice. Okay. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about another one. How about integers modulo 2? This thing is called Z2. And it consists of 0 and 1. So 3 equals 1, 2 equals 0, negative 1 equals 1. This is a rather boring thing, right? This is just a very simple circle. Um, so 1 times 1 equals 1. 0 times 1 equals 0, and that's pretty much all there is to say. And 0 times 0 equals 0. That's pretty much all there is to say. 1 plus 1 equals 0. 0 plus 1 equals 1. And 0 plus 0 equals 0. Everything does have a multiplicative inverse except 0. Right? There is a one half, there's no one half because two is zero, so you're doing one over two, one over zero, and you can't do that. Okay? It, it, there's just nothing here. It's boring, rather boring. But what about Z3? Okay, so this is 0, 1, and 2. Uh, 
What is one half? What is one half in this, in Z3? What number times two equals one? Well, four is boring, all right? So zero times two is zero. One times two is, there's only so many to check, right? One times two equals, um, So 1 times 2 equals 2. 2 times 2 equals 4, which equals 1. So 1 half equals 2. How do we feel about that one to five? And that's really the only one, right? Because all the others are, are boring in a sense, right? Because one over one, that's just one. Um, so it's got a multiplicative inverse. So if I multiply two by two, I wind up with one. Okay. So here we've got everything has an inverse. Here we've got everything has an inverse. Multiplicative inverse. What about four? Remember, when math teachers say things are trivial, um, oh, um, trivial means that it's, you know, the multiplicative inverse of one is one, right? One times one is one. And zero doesn't have fun. Any, everything but zero. Right? Everything but zero. Well, what about the integers modulo four? Well, let's see. One half equals X so that X times two equals one. So 1 times 2 equals 2, not equal to 1. 2 times 2 equals 4. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Hmm. 3 times 2 equals 6, which equals 2. 4 times 2. I'm out of numbers. It's called integers modulo because we're doing the modulus to say things are equal. We ran out of numbers, right? We only have four of them. Zero's never going to work. I tried one. I tried two. I tried three. None of them work. One half does not exist. Well, what about one third? Okay, so 1 times 3 equals 3, not equal to 1. 1 times uh, 
So 2 times 3 equals 6, which equals 2, not equal to 1. 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, so what do I need to do? I need to subtract 4. That becomes 5, which equals 1. So 1 third does exist, but 1 half does not. Okay, so why did it work for 2 and 3, but not 4? Hmm. Someone said prime numbers, and that is indeed the key. Let's look at Z5. One half is X so that X times two equals one. Right? So one half, one times two equals two. One, I'm sorry, two times two equals four, not equal to one, not equal to one. 3 times 2 equals 6 equals 1, so 1 half equals 3. 1 third is x so that x times 3 equals 1. 1 times 3 equals 3, that's not 1. 2 times 3 equals Six, which equals one. So one third equals two. One fourth is X so that X times four equals one. So 1 times 4 equals 4 does not equal 1. 2 times 4 equals 8 equals, so I'm in Z5, so that equals 3, does not equal 1. And 3 times 4 equals 12, which equals subtract 5, and I get what? 7, which equals 2, not equal to 1. Uh, 4 times 4 equals 16, uh, which equals um, it's 15 plus 1, so it's going to be 1. So 1 fourth equals uh, 4. How do we feel about that? 1 to 5.
and we call these things fields. If every number but zero has a multiplicative inverse and it's already a ring, we call it a field. Um, and again, another term that you don't need to know, but you can look up. Okay. All right, so what we talked about today was we started talking about the modulo. I promised you a, uh, a workup of why the Euclidean algorithm works. I'm, I'm gonna save that until when we do the extended because what we're about to do is we're gonna start playing in these modulo integers. Um, and they have some very interesting properties. And um, we didn't do exponents today, we will. Um, but the interesting thing is that if n is prime, I get multiplicative inverses. If n is not prime, there's going to be elements that don't, there's gonna be fractions that don't exist, okay? And then the the fact that, you know, what in this case, like two equaled, you know, negative four, one, two, three, four equals two. So you have to do the, the, the prime number. Yes, so one half exists if we're talking about Z, P, where P is prime, and all of the other inverses exist, right? But if you're not talking about a prime, there are going to be numbers without multiplicative inverses. And this is actually the foundation for a lot of cryptography, okay? The fact that when you have a field or when you have multiplicative inverses, you can do things with them. Um, and the fact that certain things don't have multiplicative inverses. So um, it, it, it makes it so that I can do these modulo arithmetic things that are extremely, so if I take two primes, Every number of those two primes are going to have multiplicative inverses. But if I multiply those two primes together, I'm going to wind up with numbers that are bad. And if you try to run algorithm, decryption algorithms on those numbers without the primes, the original primes, you're not going to be able to do it. Right? You need the original prime numbers because those things all have multiplicative inverses in order to do the calculations to figure out how to decrypt the message, right? So if I take two huge primes and I multiply them together, the fact that it's hard to get back what the original primes were means that I can do cryptography by using mathematics and modulo numbers, okay? So that's where we're going with this. Next time, what we're probably going to do um, I'm going to look in the book to make sure that it's doing it sort of in this order, but I didn't see Diffie-Hellman in the book, and we want to get to that. So we want to do, next time what we want to do, what we want to do next time is we want to do um, uh, exponents. Um, in Zn, and we want to do logs in Zn. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is we're setting up, um, we're going to do that very briefly. Uh, basically, what we're going to have is a giant chart. Um, and that's what we want. When we do these logs, because this is actually a, and this is actually a very hard problem. For computers. This right here is a very hard problem. It takes a long time to solve, okay? Um, so it's a, it's a hard problem, but we're going to get into what a logarithm is. Cause we're not going to actually be doing like logs. As you think of it, we're going to have a big chart that we're going to look these things up on. And the, the reason why we need to do that is because that's how Diffie Hellman works, which is the goal. The goal is Diffie Hellman. Um, okay. Um, I'm not sure we're going to do that because we need to do some basic ciphering as well before we do that. Um, so we're going to have to do this. We may also do, let me go ahead and put this down here. We may do Caesar cipher. Uh, we may get to Caesar cipher. We may not. I'm not spelling that guy's name right. Uh, 
Um, uh, so what we're setting up here is Diffie Hellman. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? All right, so that's it for tonight. Uh, last part, I think you want me to come back here. Um, so that's it for today. Um, and uh, the quiz will be posted as soon as I, uh, I wanted to see how far I got. I need to take off the exponent tricks. Um, but that's it. Uh, any other questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? Okay, uh, have a good one.